Hi folks, Kim Schofield here back with another video on my YouTube channel. Today I have a crafters workshop project for you, a mixed media canvas. I'm going to be showing you a technique on this as well using pan pastels. So I am working on a canvas board from Dick Blick. You can buy these in sets of eight or 10, I think. They're pretty inexpensive. They are already gessoed. I'm also have some some pan pastels, this beautiful butterfly stencil from the Crafters Workshop. And embossing ink, uh, mine is from Simon Says Stamp, but you could um, use the Versamark as well. And then I have some tools. And all I'm doing is picking up a little bit of the pan pastel and applying it onto my canvas. Um, now, of course, this is a canvas, so it has a textured surface. So it's not going to be completely opaque when I put this on you will see some of the canvas you know the texture if you're really looking close some of that peeking through but that's fine um, this is the way you clean these little sponges you just wipe them off on a paper towel they don't actually clean which is kind of weird like the color stays on uh, the little foam pads but um, it does not transfer when you change colors so you can get these um, Gee, I'm trying to think of where you can get them. I'll try to find a link and put it in the description below. Dick Blick probably has them. That might be a good resource for you for pan pastels. Um, so pan pastels are just that. They are a pastel. They're very chalk-like. Um, you don't, you just need to really pat the foam onto the color and it picks up onto the foam pad and you can apply it. Um, they are not permanent, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I'm kind of creating a little bit of a rainbow effect, a little bit. I am creating a rainbow effect <laughs> on my canvas. Um, and there's really nice blending between these. You can go back and forth. You can see I have my orange just blending that pink in a little bit, so there's not a stark uh, line between the two of them. And I'm kind of, I'm working on a diagonal here just for something a little bit different. Um, I apologize, it looks like the bottom part of my screen is cutting cut off there a little bit. Um, I'm just adding, I'll be adding some purple onto the bottom. Um, the little foam pads, sometimes they get a little flaky, but it's no big deal. You just kind of uh, blow or brush those little flakes off. I'm probably ready to replace mine. So here I have uh, all of my colors down the way I want them. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my stencil down on top of the canvas in uh, the area that I want. And I am going to use some masking tape just to hold the stencil down to my craft sheet since this is a pretty large stencil. This is the 12 by 12. Uh, I didn't want it moving around. And now I have just a uh, like a craft foam, a makeup sponge, and I am pouncing that into my embossing pad, uh, pad and then pouncing that on top of or through my stencil. So I'm just trying to apply the ink through the stencil so that it sticks onto my canvas. And I'll just continue doing that. Now you'll see what that looks like when it's off. You can see some of that shine there. And I did get a teeny bit of the ink kind of bleeding under the stencil, but not too bad. So now I am picking up the exact same colors and I'm going back over those areas with my pan pastel. And you will see how very fun this is. And you can do this on a card with a card background as well. And so now my pan pastel is going to stick to anywhere where that embossing ink is located. And so now you get this darker image. Oh, I love it. It's so much fun. It's a great background technique. And you can do this with stamps or with stencils. So if you wanted to use a Versamark and a solid uh, image stamp, a solid uh, stamp on your background, you could get the same look. Isn't that so cool? Oh man, it's fantastic. And so easy. And so you could create an entire background uh, using this technique. And that's pretty much what I'm doing here. I love these butterflies. I love this stencil. This would look great using some uh, modeling paste as well. And so I'm just going to go back over all of my colors. I'm patting a little bit, going around the sides, and then I can go back and 
add a little bit more of the pan pastel if I want, or a little bit more of those colors to blend them together. And you can see I'm just adding, making a little bit darker there on the blue. And so here is where I'm going to set my pan pastels and I just use hairspray, cheap oil Aquanet hairspray, and that will set uh, the pastels so that they don't move and you'll wanna do that. So I have a piece of chipboard here and I am using some Crafters Workshop black paint or new paints. They're so beautiful, really thick and creamy, and very opaque. And I am just covering up the sides of this chipboard and I'm making everything Putting the paint along the side so you can't see any of that chipboard. And then I'll put that aside to dry. So I decided to use some of that leftover paint and create some black edges on my canvas. And so what you're going to end up seeing here really in this project is the transformation of something that started in one direction and ended up in another. So, um, so I've got a bunch of little bits here. I have this butterfly that I had. Um, I have punched out some circles from text. I have some Wendy, Becky, Matt mini butterflies, kind of gathering just a bunch of uh, items together that I want to use on my canvas. So I started out by using this butterfly and using some shimmery goodness. Yes, that really is the name of it, and it is fantastic. It is a iridescent paint. I guess it's a paint, it's almost like a modeling paste, it's pretty thick, but you can add it to paint or you can use it straight the way I am here. So I wanted a little bit of iridescence on my butterfly wings, but what I found was that it covered up the color a little too much. So I thought this might dry a little more clear, but it kind of held on to um, a little bit of that opaque nature and I couldn't see the colors well enough. Then I ended up going with a larger butterfly stamp anyway, which I felt uh, worked out better for my canvas. So I just have all these little bits. And I will uh, use some black ink to color my Wendy Vecchi butterflies. These are just a heavy chipboard. And this is ink from Simon Says. And actually, this ink worked really well, gave me great coverage. So I've kind of, my thought originally was to have this silhouette type of look with the, the butterflies in the black and then just one butterfly to be very colorful. But I found after a while that it was getting a little too dark and the black was too much. So I probably should have refrained from using the black on the edges, although I thought it looked good initially. Um, so now I'm gonna add a little bit more black <laughs> to, uh, my canvas, I just want a little bit of texture and this is another Crafters Workshop stencil. Kind of love these kind of stencils that are just these little designs and it just adds a little bit to the background. So you get some nice texture. In this case, I got some color, really trying to bring the black in and marry that in. And I'm just, you know, continually putting things onto my canvas for placement. So as I add a little bit of the embossing paste, then I'll say, okay, my chipboard piece, how's that gonna fit? Do I want any of this stenciling behind the chipboard piece, et cetera? So that is just what I'm doing right now and kind of making sure that I have some of this stencil design around my entire canvas. So here is my Dina Wakely butterfly. It's a, lot, it's a lot larger than the original one that I had. And I'm just gonna use some finger daubers and my Wendy Vecchi archival inks to color it in. Very quickly, I'm gonna cut the butterfly out so it doesn't matter if um, I go outside of the lines. And you can see if you blend with your archival inks, uh, right after you put them down, you can get some great blending. So you can see just a little bit of orange that's created from my blue and my pink. And then I'll get a little bit of purple from the, oh, my yellow and my pink for my orange. And then my blue and pink gives me a little bit of purple on the wings of the butterfly. And so I'm just gonna color that in. See, I've also stamped uh, my sentiment over there on the right-hand side. My little finger daubers are so much fun. I love them. And then when I'm finished with that, I'll just cut that out. So here's what I said. Okay, I think this is a little too, um, little too dark for me. And so all I did was water down some gesso 
and I have a pretty dry brush and I'm just brushing that on over the canvas. So I'm going over the edges and the whole background. So you're still gonna see that butterfly design in the background, but it's just gonna to tone down that black so it's not so stark. And I'm going over the uh, black embossing paste as well. And so I also even went over the edges a little bit with my finger just to cover up that black. And now I am using a script stamp from Joggles and still some of my black ink, but just adding a little bit of that on top. And so that this text stamp is so small and very subtle that I don't mind some of that black showing through, but it just didn't like quite as intense as it was before. And so now I also have a stamp from Tim Holtz, and I am just adding that in a few spots around the frame. And I do apologize for how low I um, low my camera was there. I think I was zoomed in a little too much. I didn't even realize that. I'm sorry that that's cutting off. So adding a little bit more stamping with another Tim Holtz stamp. You can see how that butterfly looks awesome once it's cut out. And now, because every project needs brown, hey, I don't have any brown on this project, that's good. But you also need those blotty dotties. And so I am adding a little bit of that, again, to get that white, a little bit more of the white in there in the background. And then I will do the same with the black. I think it's because I had a pretty colorful background and had just a little too much going on. And that gesso wash, gesso is your friend, um, really can do so much to tone down a background or if you just decide you don't like it at all, just gesso over it, it covers everything up. Um, definitely one of those things you wanna have on your craft table at all times. Okay, so my background is done. Um, I am happy with it. You can see I went over those edges even a little bit more with the white gesso. And I am just using some gel medium now to put down all of my glue down all of my little pieces. And you'll want to use a good heavy glue for this so uh, nothing falls off. And this was actually some Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper that I glued onto a piece of heavier cardstock just so it would have a little bit more. Um, it would be a little heavier, it would hold up a little bit better and not be transparent. So I really wanted a white text background and most of my vintage books have more of that um, off-white look. So just putting some of those circles behind and I actually laid everything out before I put it down and took a photo of it so I would remember where everything was located when I went to uh, glue everything back down. I love circles, aren't they great? Just text circles. It's good stuff. I love it. Adds so much decoration. So um, I added some foam tape to the back of my butterfly for a little extra dimension. And of course, that's only going on the body, so the wings pop up. And then my sentiment, I actually cut apart, not not each individual word, but just in um, little parts of the sentence. And now I'm just trying to determine where exactly I want my sentiment to go. So I felt like it disappeared a little bit on the white circle. So just playing around with that. And here you can see I finally settled on a spot, which works. And then now I am adding those Wendy Vecchi matte mini butterflies. Kind of, it's a nice look where you have those the butterflies in the background, you can kind of see that in the background. And then now you've got these ones in the foreground. So it kind of creates this uh, a really great look, like a full covered canvas of butterflies, my favorite. And now I'm just adding some little rhinestones to create a little trail for the butterfly. And that is about it for me. Here's the rest of my little butterflies. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. Here is a project, here's a photo, close-up photo of the finished canvas. And you can visit me on my blog or on the Crafters Workshop. Thanks so much, happy crafting.